Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. So I'm building a rifle. I bought a 700 stock and a gunsmith friend of mine machined the barrel. It was a 308 barrel that we are going to make for a 300 blackout rifle. Sorry. You all set, bud? Judd loves these videos. And so I ordered a detachable box mag that you see here, thinking that it was going to be a drop-in fit with this stock, and it's not. And uh, it's kind of one of those projects where you think, well, it's really cool that I have a mill, so that means I can do it, but it's also a curse because the reality is I just wish this thing was a drop-in fit. I wasn't actually looking forward to uh, machining it. Shooting for me at this point in my life is something I look forward to be fun, not cause stress, and uh, I was hoping to build this gun in a fun way. I'm not really a gunsmith. I was more just putting it together. Anyways, it's going to be a great lesson because what we're going to do is show how we can, I think, or hope, easily get this machined out without going, without pulling our hair out um, by taking a picture of it, importing that picture into SolidWorks and dimensioning the, the uh, part out that way. And then we'll hop into Sprut Cam, rip up the cam, and then we'll try machining this stock in the Tormach CNC mill. You can see a photo of me taking the photo here. Use household lights or something to eliminate the shadows as best you can. Here is the resulting photo, and it's not bad. You'll see here when we are in SOLIDWORKS, it's a little blurry on the edges. So new file, and we'll create a sketch on the front plane. And we're going to, we know the part is 7395. We use that as a guide box. So tools, sketch tools, sketch picture, and import the picture. It'll take a second. Okay, picture's here, way too big. So, whoops, let's come down, say 10 inches, drag it over our box. Still too big, nine inches. Ooh, pretty close actually. Uh, a little bigger, 9.05. Uh, I'm good with that. Now, you can tell the picture's a little bit rotated, Sometimes I cheat and you can see, use a straight edge in SOLIDWORKS, like the top of the screen, to hair clockwise. So we'll put in, say, one degree, too much, 0.5 degrees. Good enough for me. Okay. Now, I actually don't like having it now over the box because, so the next thing we're going to do is create a new sketch front plane and I don't if you have it over the box it'll try to hug these lines which I don't want it to do so here's what we're going to do though pick a point right in the middle of the, sh of the sh blurred shading come down match it on this side now you have a center line now if you hug that center line and go left you see I get the little dotted line Good. So now I'm in the center of my part. Same thing. Ma try to be consistent here. I'm going to pick right in the middle where it starts to blur out. Start my line. Come all the way over. And do the same thing. I swear I wasn't looking at that number that just showed up. Dimension the line. And look, we, we, we know it's 7,395. We are three and a half thousand off. That's the thickness of a sheet of paper across a seven inch part with a photograph. Pretty darn cool, if you ask me. So that's an important line. Uh, we can delete this line for now. The other important line is we can we know that this piece here, not the trigger guard, but the piece right here is, is parallel to that part. And we know that distance. The overall width is 691. So what we'll do is we'll just draw a straight line. You can see it snaps in. And we will smart dimension 0.691 divided by 2. Perfect. Again, helps us with the sanity check. Also kind of tells us where we should be hugging on the shading uh, a little bit closer to the dark shading, not the light shading. Now let's trace the part. There's an auto trace feature in SOLIDWORKS, but I don't like it on good days and definitely not on a part like this. So I start with lines. We'll come back and fix them. We know this section here is a straight line. So where does that start? We'll call it about here maybe. Eh, no, I'd like to go back a little more. Sometimes zooming in helps, sometimes it's a hindrance. I like that spot. 
So now come in to where the next curve starts, say about there. Again, we'll fix these in a second. This is a straight taper. And this I'm gonna override and say, you know, come in to about here. So now I'll do trim entities. Oops. Okay, now I just need to fix those curved sections. I'm not the SOLIDWORKS expert, but this gets it done for me. I'm excited to see in the comments below what you guys uh, say that's a better way to do it. Now you can see the little blue arrow, I can't point to it with my mouse because, um, because I'm holding the line, but see it zigzagging around? That tells you um, if you want to be on center. So happens to be, looks pretty darn good right there. This is two separate curves, so I'll pick about halfway, hug that one. Again, folks, this is not a world competition winning bench rest rifle. This is me having a 200, 300 yard gun. Um, this can be bedded later if we want to. That's a whole other gunsmithing conversation. I'm just trying to get this thing to fit. And I think it should be accurate, but this is, again, not how you you know, do tool and die work. And finish it up. This will be pretty easy. Again, you can use the blue line to, or the blue crosshairs to match up if you like so. And trim that. Make sure that's okay. Yeah, I think so. So, that's actually really all we need to do. We can now create another sketch, which we'll use to simulate the stock just as a placeholder. And now what we'll do is we'll move that up and we'll take this extrude cut. We'll do it through all for now. Oops. Sorry about that. We had uh, we had we did have a little problem here. I didn't catch. There we go. And now we can choose extrude cut. And there we go. And then we can hide our picture. And then just mirror. Plane will be that faces of the mirror will be that. Okay, so we'll spot check it here. We'll take two points and just see what we get. So that's 746 on our part that measures, and I'm going to eyeball in it, 750. I don't know if I'm that accurate, you know, 4,000 just using a uh, set of calipers on a wide point there. But the point is we're okay because we can machine this in a couple of passes by going conservative at first and and looking for where we can fit it with it, whether it's Dicom or, or just um, going in with Sprute Cam here and, and, and recutting certain sections that we think are okay or too wide. The point is, this is gonna be a great starting point. In Sprute Cam, I'm gonna cut this into three different files. I wanna take it easy here, and we've got different Z depths that we may end up having to cut at. So the first one will be the right hand side. I'm gonna start with this uh, very uh, end part here and then cut these two paths, being careful as I uh, ramp in to make sure I'm ramping in here, but then not there. For the second one, I'm gonna handle the exact opposite side. Again, same thing, nice curve in, and I'll be able to adjust the Z-depth uh, sort of on the fly here. And then finally, I'll handle the middle stuff separately, and this is the deepest part of the part, and I think the one I'm a little, the most nervous about uh, including these tighter radiuses here. So we'll see how it goes, uh, but you guys get the idea. So let's hop over to the Tormach and start with uh, that first file. Yeah, first off folks, look, I am not a gunsmith and I have a huge respect for the work that gunsmiths do. And a first great example of that is you gotta recognize there are right and wrong ways to clamp stocks. There 
you can damage them. You can, imp you can, especially if it's a wood finish, you can affect the aesthetic of it. Um, I know I've got a lug part here that gives me some decent clamping power, but look, don't take this as uh, you know the end all for <laughs> gunsmithing stocks. What I'm trying to do here is really pocket out some area for this. Now, a question that I have as much as a conclusion is that if this isn't a perfect fit and we're a little bit loose, it probably won't matter because it will bolt down and you could even sort of bed it or fit it. So I, I'm hoping that that's an acceptable answer. So uh, again, the point here is to get this to work, not necessarily to become a, a lesson on, you know, again, bench rest, thousand yard range gun, uh, gunsmithing, etc. cetera. Uh, one thing I did change that I need to mention is that in the cam, we had our X, Y, zero set it somewhere, you know, over here. What you need to do is center it so that our Y zero is, is centered between these two and our X between these two. Because right now we've got a, a pocket that's about 7.1 inches long. It's going to about 7.4 and the Y is increasing as well. So what you want to do is you can easily find the physical center of this part as it is. And then in the cam, if you've got your center, it's actually about right here, then that'll work as well, removing equal material from equal sides. That is important. So I've got that all set up. The first cut we're gonna do is actually a kind of a nasty one because we've gotta cut all the way down to this floor here so that the part will fit in, you know, like so. So we are going to take it easy here. We're gonna go down in pretty small steps. I think uh, it's an inch deep and we're going down in, uh, looks, you know, looks like uh, six or seven steps. So let's see how she does. You also, use, I would also highly recommend spot checking your tool path, almost like single blocking it in mock to make sure everything looks good. Okay, let's rock and roll. Now I know this is gonna be a little bit too high because we're still working off of the Z height of this lug over here. So we'll probably have to come in and take another pass. Uh, that did just scare me, I meant for it to start over here. Um, we'll probably have to come in and take another deeper pass to relieve this wall right here. But this will at least tell us if we've got a good diameter or width. Okay, good news so far. Check that out. Just nice and snug. It fits, it fits, but it doesn't have any looseness to it, and I can see it'll ride that channel as well. So that's, uh, you know, that's starting to look like good news. I've got to do now is I'm actually going to have to grab a, well, I'm going to try to take this channel out down here. So let's work on that first. I'm trying to think of, I'm going to have to switch to a smaller end mill to get that corner out of there. We'll figure it out. So I decided to change the order of operations. Uh, what we're gonna do now, we'll leave this little rim here. What I wanna do is try to get this main pocket started because that's the one that I've gotta clear the most material out of to get this down and I can start feeling it. Because ultimately this is a fitting job more than a machining job. And some of the size I'm realizing is just gonna have to be done with a hand file or a chisel or stuff like that, which is not a big deal. So let's, um, you saw I just machined that out. Let's now try this middle pocket here for the box mag. Okay, I walked through and jogged through just to make sure everything looks okay, and it does. We're just gonna take the first pass of 100 thou uh, from this top here. That way if we don't, we see something we don't like, we can change it and hopefully still be, you know, should still be fine.
Okay, let's take a look here. That fits. Uh, we're actually almost a little too snug. Well, I don't think too snug, but snug in the back. Um, and probably a little bit loose there. But, uh, and it's hard to test the front fit yet, but I think that's actually going to be great. Um, now, what I do got to do, though, is look at this pocket right here. Go deeper. Okay, before we cut more, I forgot to mention, folks, uh, something really important, which is, like uh, many rifle stocks, this is fiberglass. And as a general rule, don't machine fiberglass if you don't have to. It's nasty stuff. If you breathe it in, it's a carcinogen. You want to have a vacuum running. You want to watch out for the dust particulates. You want to wear a mask. Um, lots of safety mechanisms and precautions to take, and it's always not worth it. It can dull end mills, as I understand it, because it ultimately is a type of glass, and you almost want to be going faster than I'm going. And Or you can use burrs. There's a lot of research on it. I'm not an expert, so I don't want to act like one. Um, this is working great for what I want to get it to do, but uh, I uh, don't ever want to act too casual or certainly uninformed when it comes to taking... Uh, not only real safe risk, safety risks that you need, you need to be aware of and thinking about. So let's, with that, um, try to finish this up. Okay, did that do the trick? So can we go deeper? Yes, that is deeper. That's the first step, that's the deeper step, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna measure how much further down I need to go. Approximately 600 thou. I'm gonna do that offline here, I'll be right back. We finish that up and we'll see how she fits. So I didn't finish it last night, it's now the next morning, and I went, on the way home I was just like, gosh, is this even a good enough uh, project for the folks on NYCCNC? I just sort of felt like, ah, I didn't really emphasize enough about the fiberglass cutting in, in the beginning of the video, which is really important, folks. Safety is, um, you know, safety matters when it's something that can directly cause cancer and really cause problems with your health. This isn't an overbearing safety thing, this is real. Uh, but then I came in this morning and I took a couple of quick filings. You could see here on this inside corner, I could tell that's where it was binding and I didn't want to machine it. So I just took a Dremel and it doesn't look as pretty as I'd like, but the truth is it's totally fine. And as soon as I relieved that, oh my gosh, look at the fit folks. And as soon as that snapped in, it all kind of turned around and I realized this is a great project. I took a little bit of time because I wanted to turn it into a video, but holy smokes, I took a quick picture, modeled this up, and was able to machine a relatively complex thing and have it fit phenomenally well. You can see here this, the, the, the geometry is lined up incredibly well. So I think that is really, really, really cool. And I realized, you know, I probably was a little bit down. As you guys know, I've been frustrated with the Dylan 1050 project, and that was kind of frustrating me. It's getting a lot colder here. And so that's okay, I actually like the cold, but I've got to get, you know, changes things. I've got to either heat the shop with a, we have a wood stove, I've got to wear different clothing. Anyways, I actually am really happy with this, how this, how this turned out. I'm excited. This is a box drop mag for a 300 blackout rifle, which is, should be awesome. So I uh, want to emphasize though, again, the real lesson here was the solid work side. It's the software side. The Tormox is an awesome machine. It's really cool to have it be able to take care of this stuff so easily and so quickly. Uh, be safe, folks. If you're machining fiberglass, wear appropriate respirators. Have a shot back or some way to evacuate those chips so they're not floating in the air. And, uh, well, that's it. If you guys have enjoyed, please thumbs up, comments, likes, shares. I've really appreciated the enthusiasm this summer and coming into this winter on the channel. It's really awesome to see the growth. And I will see you soon, folks. Take care.